good afternoon dear students so today we will be discussing about uh, a new unit so far we have uh, apart from the clinical discussion that we have uh, been doing in the class uh, in the clinical area and along with your presentation uh, we have uh, seen uh, the uh, various medical illness and what all is there, uh, is there in the ICD-10, uh, the F chapter, starting from F0 to F99. Okay, so we have uh, completed, uh, in the last class, we have studied the F10 to 19, which is substance use related disorder. And then we have also seen the various therapies which uh, some is being uh, the uh, classes covered by me and the other various therapies also through presentation. So today we will start, we will study about F20, okay, F20 to F29. If you will recall what we have discussed, that is about schiz uh, schizophrenia, okay. Now, is my slide visible? Is my slide? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. So we will be doing about F20 to 29, which is schizophrenia. We've discussed a lot about schizophrenia with the cases, and you all also have uh, nursed these patients, you have interacted with these patients, you have spoken to these patients. So uh, let's see. So it is not a new, uh, a totally new topic that you didn't know uh, what a schizophrenic patient looks like and what are the various types of schizophrenia also you have seen and you know what are their signs so let's see what it's what schizo uh, i mean let's again review the uh, the theoretical aspect relating and integrating and please do relate and integrate and remember those patients that uh, you have nursed and you have taken care uh, which are the f20 patients okay now so we will be doing about schizophrenia so the term schizophrenia was coined in 1908 by the Swiss psychiatrist Eugene Bluler. We have discussed this. The, the, the person who, joined, who coined schizophrenia is Eugene Bluler. And if you will recall, he also gave the Bluler's A, which are the four A's. Okay, now the word was derived from the Greek word schizo, which is meaning uh, which means split, and friend, which means mind. So, which is splitting of the mind. Right now, if you will talk, uh, 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 if you will see, or if you will Google the general lay person, what do they understand about schizophrenia? Usually, they will say split personality. Okay, mostly they they talk on this term, on this concept that it is a, a, a split personality or, or splitting of the mind. Now, so from a, a, so in it, it because schizophrenia comes from these two words. Please do remember this because they usually ask this for exams. Please note this point and you can uh, refer the textbook too. Now, what does schizophrenia mean? Right now, so basically schizophrenia is a condition. If you will recall those person, what are the main thing that gets disturbed when you run the mental status examination? The mental status examination along with the history findings when you have collected, when, when the patients uh, give you the history and with the mental status examination, you will find that you will find they have a changes or they have deviation when you infer the mental status examination, they will have a lot of disturbances in their thought, in their perception, in their feelings and in their behavior. If you will, re will recall mental status examination, the minute, the, the first one when you checked, you check the general appearance and behavior, right? And then you go on to check their speech, their mood, their thought, their perception, right? In all the end, you make the inferences. So basically, in schizophrenia patient, we find in mostly all of them for you, if you will recall the patients that you have taken care, if you do not remember anything, remember there is always disturbance in thought, perception, feelings and behavior. Okay, now, so because of this, it results in severe deterioration of social and occupational functioning. Now, depend on this too, depending on these, 
we will have you will understand how the uh, different classification of the ICD on the DF2229 also come but the main one of schizophrenia which is common to all from F2229 is disturbances in thought remember thought perception mood and be mood and feelings and emotions and their behavior remember this there will be changes in thought changes in perception in thought you all know if you will recall changes either in the formation level changes either in the progression level or changes in the contents level when you will see in your patients in the formation level if you will recall one when, when we have had our clinical dis, uh, discussion that uh, in the uh, formation level they have those autistic thinking right autistic thinking means patient is drawn to self and they are uh, they are lost in their own fantasy thinking right that is uh, autistic thinking and then in the progression level you will see most of them have either uh, perseveration either uh, we have uh, discussed extensively the difference between perseveration and verb duration right and then those poverty of thought uh, then tangentiality circumstantiality right and in the perception mainly they will have either uh, illusion or hallucination Right. So, this, because of this, it brings about severe deterioration in social and occupational functioning. If you will recall, mental health and mental illness continuum. Whichever disease that we are studying now, you have already nursed these patients, you have seen these patients, we have had a clinical discussion on these cases too, on all these uh, mental illness, always remember remember that uh, when you study mental uh, mental illness please remember keep in mind the concept biopsychosocial uh, model because from there you will understand what are the etiological factors remember mental illness is multifactorial in its causes no single factor it is right now so that's why taking a history in mental illness is different from taking a history in the general medical physical illness right because in mental in physical illness we ask do you have fever do you have pain what type of pain in fever okay at what time do you have fever in the morning or evening right and then we check the vitals so their temperature is this their pulse is this respiration is this bp is this. It's, it's like you understand everything is accurate and based on what are they in the physical findings and then we make the interpretation now why is uh, uh, understanding mental illness totally different and it needs a continuous psychosocial um, history taking and then a everyday mental status examination right so that we will understand in depth each and all the factors arising either uh, from the biological realm or the psychosocial realm uh, the psychological realm or the social realm or the uh, interaction between the biopsychosocial realm remember that okay now another one the severe deterior uh, deterioration of social and occupational functioning please remember another another thing always remember what is health what is mental health Keep that this concept very clear with you. Now, what the same health wellness, health illness continuum, the same thing we apply in mental illness. Now, so we call it a mental illness only when there will be disturbances when it results in severe deterioration in the social and occupational functioning. That's why ICD, which a uh, classification we've discussed about this, give specific criteria for a person to be to uh, to say that a person will have mental illness. Yes, a person may deviate. Okay, there may be a disturbances in person's thoughts. I may have thought block, or I may some sometimes do daydreaming. Right. Or sometimes when I'm so excited, when I'm so happy, I may have flight of ideas. Right. Or uh, I may use new, new words, neologism, they call that. Right. Now, or, uh, no, but then when I will have uh, delusion, right, 
then that that means the deviation is a little bit more right or when i will have societal ideation or phobias that's because these they will disrupt the deteriorate uh, the so the functioning of uh, my social and my occupation uh, and my work my performance right so when it brings marked disturbances right in the person's thoughts perception feelings and behavior and remember schizophrenia is associated with it it is not a neurotic disorder it is a psychotic disorder we have discussed extensively the difference between psychosis and neurosis now let's let's proceed okay now what is the history and evaluation in 1868 uh, the history and evolution of schizophrenia yeah. 1860, we'll just see in, in brief, 1868, called Worm referred abnormal motor tension as catatonia or catatonia. Catatonia schizophrenia is also a part, is also one of the classification of schizophrenia, which if you will recall, catatonia has got to do with the uh, physical uh, or motor um, activity uh, of a, a person. Okay, now let's continue. And 1911, Eugene Bleuler was the first to use the term schizophrenia. We have seen a lot of, we have discussed Eugene Blue, uh, Bleuler's A, we call it. And then 1959, Kurt Schneider outlined the first Reich symptoms. If you will recall, we had discussed about the blueless A and the uh, rank symptoms, which is given by Kurt Schneider. Okay, now uh, let's uh, proceed. Of all the mental illnesses that cause suffering in the society, schizophrenia is responsible for lengthier hospitalization. Usually, of all from F00 to F99, one of please mark this please note this okay because they are they they it, it comes as viva okay now in the one which uh which has lengthy hospitalization is a uh, is schizophrenia okay now there's greater chance of suicide association with this disorder why because if you will recall that there is made feeling Right, thought control. If you will re uh, remember, thought control, uh, uh, thought withdrawal, thought insertion on the the command. Right, so there is high chances of suicide, which is associated with schizophrenia. Now, a study done in uh, Addington, two thousand six, estimated that ten percent of patients with schizophrenia die by suicide. Right? You will recall, if you will recall, what we have discussed in the uh, in the clinical discussion, because of the mate feeling, right? The mate feeling and because of the thought control they have a lot of thought control now what comes on a thought con control uh, you all know we have thought insertion thought withdrawal thought broadcasting right and then we have made volition right that means a person is made to act under the behest of some voice that tells them to do because remember they have disturbances in perception so if they have disturbances in perception they are marked hallucination so when they have auditory hallucination, a voice commanding them. So this, most of the uh, literature says, most of the study says that uh, 10%, they die by suicide. 40 to 55% have suicidal ideation. Okay. Now, what are suicidal thoughts? I am all alone. I can't take it anymore. I just want to... Uh, give up now later on in the uh, later classes why does feelings and emotions and mood uh, and societal thoughts do play a role you will see uh, when you will learn neurotransmitters we have discussed this also if you will uh, if you will recall you will you will be able to relate it uh, better uh, the dopaminergic pathway and the serotonin pathway is very close now when it uh, uh, when it acts on the uh, dopamine, it does the uh, it does affect the uh, serotonin part of it too. Okay, now so what is the ICD classification of this? This we have we have studied. We will just see it again. F twenty to twenty nine is schizophrenia. 
seizotypal and delusional disorder. What is F10 to 19? We have substance use disorder, which is what is F00 to 09? We have organic brain disorder. 10 to 19, substance use related disorder. Then F20 to 29, we have schizophrenia, seizotypal and delusional disorder. Why it ends F29? Because F30, mood disorder started. Right now. Now, so let's see. So F20, schizophrenia. 20.0, it is paranoid schizophrenia. 20.1, hebephrenic schizophrenia. 20.2, catatonic schizophrenia. 20.3, undifferentiated schizophrenia. 20.4, post-schizophrenic depression. 20.5, F20.5, restable schizophrenia, F20.6, simple schizophrenia, F20.8, other schizophrenia, 20.9, schizophrenia unspecified. This is the F20 under the schizophrenia. We have this. Now, F21, we have seizotypal disorder, right? F22, we have persistent delusional disorder. What is delusion? Remember, delusion is a false fixed firm belief. Now, under the, uh, the delusion, we have this various uh, um, delusion of Par uh, paranoia delusion, delusion of grandeur, delusion of persecution, delusion of reference, all those, okay, we will see about this. Uh, F23 is acute and transient psychotic disorder. F24, it is induced delusional disorder. F25, seizoaffective disorder. F28, uh, other non-organic psychotic disorder. And F29, unspecified non-organic psychosis. You can refer to the ICD-10 and you will understand this. Okay? Now, epidemiology. So, schizophrenia affects around 0.3 to 0.7 of people. At some point in their life, or 21 million worldwide as of 2011, about one in every two age five. This is a, this is quite an old um, uh, census. Now we are in uh, 21. Uh, please review the uh, literature, and maybe in the uh, in the subsequent classes, I uh, I will uh, find out the latest figures and I will tell you. Okay, now it causes 1% of worldwide disability adjusted life years. When you have studied about disability in second year, we uh, there there is a scale that assess and that measure disability of a person. Okay, now so why this schizophrenia, uh, schizophrenia is worldwide and then it does make the person um, having uh, disability adjusted life yes because it, it leads to chronic and it takes a long time uh, to recover to. okay now age and gender 1.4 times it is more frequent in males okay age of onset 20 to 28 years in male it starts at later years in female 26 to 32 years in Females. Now, later on, when we will do child psychiatry, uh, childhood schizophrenia also is there. Okay. Now, that when we when we will be doing the child psychiatry, that time uh, we will discuss that. So now, in general, the uh, when it comes to gender, it is more frequent in males. Uh, the onset, the age of onset, it is early in males on the later side in females okay now uh, so this is uh, what is the daddy rate the disability uh, adjusted life yes right so uh, these are the findings now in 2004 india has the 47th place according to daddy rate now reproductive factors in this from this we will start the biological factors okay now first degree biological relatives of the person with schizophrenia have 10 times greater risk for developing disease than the general population now from how do we know this that's why we when we collect the psychiatric history we always take the uh, 
genogram for three generations, right? We always plot in which you all have done it also now. So uh, if the first degree biological relatives are having schizophrenia, so uh, they have 10 times greater risk. That means in my first line, if anyone has schizophrenia, I have 10 times greater risk of developing uh, the uh, disease than the general population. Now, medical illness. People with schizophrenia have great mortality rate from the accident. Suicide risk. 20% of persons with schizophrenia die due to suicidal attempt. Now, substance use abuse. Cigarette smoking. Three-fourths of patients with schizophrenia smoke cigarettes. Other and, and others also, they use other substances. Okay? Now, social, economic, and cultural factors. It is more in low-income groups. Okay? Uh, downward drift hypothesis. Affected people move into or fail to come out of their low income, start, uh, income status. Okay, they say um, if you will go to the biopsychosocial model, so it is more prevalent in the low income groups. Later on, you will see because stress is also one of the stress and stressors are one that affects the neurotransmitters, okay, uh, 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 or that uh, have an uh, effect on the uh, person, right? So they say that person living, uh, person who have low income group or uh, with low in income status plus other factors which favors schizophrenia so it is it uh, it shows that it is more in the low income groups social causation hypothesis stress experienced by the members contribute to schizophrenia okay now we will continue hospitalization readmission usually a patient with schizophrenia do they keep coming within two years after discharge from the first hospitalization in 40 to 60 percent now why is the revolving door more they call this revolving door okay like like they become okay then they go home right and then again with these stresses if they uh if they cannot handle or uh they uh, poor adherence to the treatment uh poor compliance to the medication right so usually within two years after discharge they do come back for admission now so what are the blue list a now we have discussed this let's just see one by one associational disturbances Disturbance with, associ uh, with association or some books write loosening of association. Okay. Then two, affective disturbances. Three, autism. Autism is that withdrawn to, uh, in the, their own fantasy world. Okay. And ambivalence. We have discussed this uh, in the, uh, extensively in the class. Yeah. In the clinical discussion. Now. What are the etiological factors? Now, by, uh, for the main, in, the, the first etiological factors is, again, when we talk of etiology, we will talk in terms of um, biological factors uh, that influence the person or that contribute and psychological factor and the, and the social factor. Okay, now, so the first biological influence is genetics. We have seen if a person is, has a first degree relative of schizophrenic of schizophrenia, they have high, they have ten times more risk of taking of getting a disease. Now, if one parent has schizophrenia, the chances of a child developing schizophrenia is ten to fourteen. If both parents have schizophrenia, chances about 46%. Now, to understand these genetics, you have understood, uh, you, have, you have studied about uh, genetics and how uh, chromosomes uh, of both parents um, influence or um, lead to uh, how does how do they inherit i will not go into detail of this recall your genetics class and then uh, you will understand now so if mark remember this first degree rel relative 10 times higher okay if only one parent 
10 to 14 per, uh, percent there is chances for a child to develop schizophrenia but the both parents definitely chances is about 46 percent now twin studies we have seen monozygotic or identical twins is four times than that of dizygotic twins and in approximately 50 times that of general population now uh, late, later on when we will see students you will understand twins now they have a lot of um, uh, it predisposed them into a lot of uh, mental illnesses now usually you uh, so uh, some it is more prevalent in monozygotic and almost uh, in almost maximum of the disease you will see it is more prevalent with identical twins and less higher than dizygotic twins does uh, uh, now so why twins twins is like uh, both the child they they grow together you know about twins you know about triplets three babies right Quad, quadruplets uh, four right now uh, so in in this so when they share when they share the same womb at the same time uh, what happens so definitely the uh, neurotransmitters also the division of the growth of the neurotransmitters also uh, takes place right uh, uh, like they will share the nutrition also they share everything they share so they say that if it is uh, same gender the uh, chances are less this this I have seen from the cases that I that I'm uh, I, um, that I read if it is same gender the risk is less but if it is uh, like you know boy girl uh, for them the the chances is more you understand because neurotransmitters and the endocrine system of a female is wired differently and that of a male is wired differently right so in uh, so they say that uh, studies among twins identical twins is four times higher than that of the dizygotic twins so these are identical twins now adoption studies so adopted children born of schizophrenic parents or mothers were compared with adopted children whose pair, whose mothers had no psychiatric disorder so what is the study shows okay the children who were born to mothers with schizophrenia were more likely to develop the illness why because they will inherit the uh, the genes right and then also they inherit the 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 personal the personality and that whole uh, neurotransmitters set up okay so even if a child is adopted uh, children are uh, born to the mothers who have schizophrenia they are more likely to develop the illness now uh, what is the biochemical influence I'll dwell more extensively on this please try to understand and uh, try to uh, pick uh, the important important points here I will stress on few of the important points which is very important for us to understand so that we understand from where the clinical features come up and also when we will give the psy uh, psychopharmacological treatment like uh, we give antipsychotic or we give uh, the um, antidepressant uh, okay or which drug what how do we give and how does it affect okay so we will discuss uh, a little bit briefly in uh, in detail about the biochemical influences now the main hypothesis which is closely related with schizophrenia is the dopamine hypothesis if you will recall we have discussed about the dopaminergic pathway okay we will discuss again now uh, please try to uh, recall those uh, the clinical discussion that we had try to recall the uh, patients and try to relate okay now in the dopamine hypothesis schizophrenia may be caused due to excess of dopamine dependent neuronal activity in the brain 
That means there is over excitation or over activation of the uh, dopamine. Thus, it results in the uh, clinical features of schizophrenia. So, the main hypothesis related with uh, schizophrenia, uh, they say hypothetically, it is closely related with the dopamine, uh, dopaminergic pathway. Now, other biochemical hypothesis, which is again related, is the abnormalities in the serotonin, abnormalities in the norepinephrine, in the acetylcholine, and in the GABA. Okay, so these usually, uh, these are uh, um, uh, serotonin, norepinephrine, these are usually uh, related with mood, with feelings, and emotions. Okay, now. Oh, uh, we will see. So the main biochemical that influences the dopaminergic pathway. Others that also contribute and that influence to the clinical features of schizophrenia is in the abnormalities in the serotonin pathway, in the uh, norepinephrine neurotransmitter, and also in the acetylcholine and in the GABA. Please mark these terms. Okay. Now, uh, what is the physiological uh, influence? Viral infection, uh, prenatal exposure to influenza, the anatomical abnormalities, ventricular enlargement, sulci enlargement, and cere uh, cerebellar. Now we will see the phys physiological influences. So, physiological influence, viral infection prenatal exposure to influenza yeah that's why they say antenatal period is very important when you will start learning uh, midwifery okay very soon you will learn i think from monday you all you will all be getting classes on ups and gyne i will talk to the hd and uh, you will be starting this monday is 31st yes uh, so you will be uh, getting classes and you will understand how uh, the uh, infection or how the uh, stages of development in the uh, pregnancy and how any uh, exposure to any infection or any trauma or um, leads to the uh, changes in the milestone or uh, leads to various um, abnormalities okay now so uh, uh, the anatomical abnormalities ventricular enlargement and then sulci enlargement and cerebellar atrophy are also reported in case of schizophrenia and mri reveals decrease in cerebellar in cerebral and intracranial size. You all have studied about organic brain disorder, neuroplasts also over. You will be able to relate well to these terms. Now, so what is the dopaminergic pathway? Okay, now the main, the four dopaminergic, we will just try to re uh, review this a bit. Okay, dopaminergic pathway, we have here mesolimbic and mesocortical pathways. Okay, now over here we have the ventral tegmental area to the nucleus. This pathway starts from VTA, which is ventral tegmental area, to the nucleus, to the accumbens, amygdala, and hippocampus, and prefrontal cortex. Usually these are there in the limbic system. I think when, uh, when we will be uh, discussing. Uh, uh, we uh, we already had when um, Alga had uh, uh, presented a bit on the uh, anatomy of the um, brain. Uh, so all these are there now. So basically, the VTA or the ventral tegmental area it gives the pleasure reward signals. Okay, now so this is the seat of what? It is the seat of memory. It is a seed of motivation and emotional response, a seed of reward and desire. Remember the uh, reward pathway that we, we speak, uh, we have discussed when it comes to uh, substance use, right? Uh, uh, disorders, right? So reward and desire, addiction. Okay, it can cause hallucination and schizophrenia if not functioning properly. 
Okay, so let's look at the limbic and mesocortical pathway. Now, the other pathway, so these two are there. The other pathway is, so we have mesolimbic pathway and mesocortical pathway. So these are responsible for this. Now, this pathway starts from where? From the VTA to the nucleus accumbens to, uh, and then it goes to the amygdala, hippocampus, and prefrontal cortex. That's why you will understand a lot of emotions, a lot of feelings, uh, a lot of, um, consolidation of memory takes place in the limbic, right? Even it is more of the reward thing, re the, the reward pathway, because pleasure reward signals is here. Okay, the, it is the seed of uh, in the VTA. Please mark these terms later on when you will uh, go for uh, exams or interview. Uh, they ask this, okay? So basically, this is just, so. Why? So all this memory, motivation, reward, addiction. And from here also your positive uh, symptoms and negative symptoms arise and other uh, symptoms of um, schizophrenia. Now, the other pathway is the nigrostridal pathway. From here, the pathway is from the substantia nigra to the striatum. Okay, now what? is this pathway uh, concentrating what or what does it regulate or uh, usually it is a seed of what okay it is a seed of motor control death of neurons in this pathway result in parkinson's disease okay you have learned what is parkinson's disease right so when there is a death of neurons in this pathway which pathway in the nigrostridal pathway so nigrostridal pathway or what of the dopamine um, neurotransmitter right so it this pathway is from substantia nigra to the striatum now the other fourth pathway is the tubero infundibular infundibular pathway this is usually got to do with the prolactin Okay, yeah. now these from here, it the pathway is from the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. If you will understand here, prolactin, prolactinemia, hypo, uh, hypo, uh, prolactinemia, hypoprolactinemia. If you will call, if you will recall these terms when you have studied endocrine disorders in second year. Okay, yeah. now basically this is a seat of hormonal regulation. Maternal behavior, okay, nurturing, uh, uh, maternal behavior, that means feeding. Now, uh, uh, pro, uh, prolactin uh, is, uh, is there, okay, then pregnancy and sensory process. So basically, dopaminergic pathway is of four, there are four part pathways in it. Let's, if you don't remember anything, just remember these words, okay, mesolimbic pathway. Okay, mesolimbic and mesocortical pathway. Mesolimbic stems mostly later on, we will see in the a subsequent slide. Okay, uh, so mesolimbic and mesocortical is from here that the positive negative symptoms stems, the disturbances in the memory, okay, the addiction, okay, from here. Now, the nigrostridal pathway from here, it uh, it causes the motor control. So when you will see those who have poor psychomotor activity or hyperpsychomotor activity, right? From where does all those come? From the disturbances in this pathway, which is the nigrostridal. And when you have studied ne uh, neurology class on Parkinson's, it is the death of the neurons in this. Right, it caused Parkinson's disease. Now, another one uh, which is closely related to uh, dopamine, and you will see later on also with patients, very chronic patients of schizophrenia, they do have prolactinemia. Okay, so uh, and then they have disturbances in their cycles. Why? Because tuberoinfundibular pathway is involved. Now, this pathway is from the hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. So, please try to understand and relate to this pathway so that you can understand how the clinical features uh, stem. 
okay or like what is the root of the clinical features and later on when we will study how do we handle and how do doctors treat to balances of either to activate or to inhibit the uh, action uh, or uh, of the the uh, activities of the neurotransmitters you will understand this okay so uh, uh, basically these four pathways now let's go on now uh, this is a better clear picture than the than the previous one now let's see the mesolimbic uh, mesocortical pathway we have the vta the whole vta is the limbic system the frontal cortex so again this is the seed of motivation emotional response reward and addiction hyperactivity activation causes schizophrenia okay now uh, the nigrostriatal pathway okay from here it's from where from the substantia nigra to the striatum substantial nigra to the striatum okay here this one is the ventral tegmental area to the limbic system see that's why here vta to the limbic system to the frontal cortex right now the seat of pleasure is here see here okay pleasure reward signals is here now so if you see this this uh, controls the motor control and if there's any cell that or degenerative changes it leads to the parkinson's disease now in tubero infundibular pathways from the hypothalamus to the pituitary so this is a seat where it regulates the prolactin right and if there is a, a blockade of d2s receptor it causes hyperprolactinemia now why because of this okay because it regulates all the from the hypothalamus to the pituitary and it regulates the hormonal uh, regulation pregnancy sensory okay it's from here right now now let's go on so mesocortical basically it is a seat of the cognition memory attention emotional behavior and learning that's why you will understand later when there is a problem in the uh, in the part when there is disturbances in the uh, mesocortical dopaminergic pathway the patient will have problem with their co cognition patients have problem with memory they do have problem with attention right and then again there will be changes in the emotions in the behavior and in their learning okay so the more chronic they uh, they become you will see when you will go to daycare those very chronic f20 patients right so where they need a lot of social skill to learn they need to relearn we need a lot we need to teach again a lot of uh, behavior right now why because if it disturbs this pathway that's why the symptoms or the features or disturbances in cognition, memory, attention, emotional behavior and learning stems from the mesocortical pathway. Okay, now, if there is any disturbances in the movement and in the sensory stimuli, sensory stimuli is what? Remember, perception right perception has got to do with sensory stimuli so a uh, nigrostridal is a seed of movement and sensory stimuli so which part of the dopaminergic pathway if the sensory stimuli gets disturbed that the one that is affected is the nigrostridal um, pathway okay now mesolimbic pathway now mesolimbic pleasure and reward seeking behaviors addiction emotion and perception so basically maximum of the positive symptoms stems from the mesolimbic and maximum of the negative symptoms stems from the mesocortical now let's see now again i told you the uh, this is the relation between tubero infundibular pathway and prolactin release so you will have to understand a bit of this because later on why why those very chronic patients they, they have complained with their uh, menstrual ir irregularity okay and then they also have a complaint with uh, uh, with uh, prolactin 
re uh, prolactin disturbance related uh, symptoms okay because of there is a this pathway now now i told you serotonin pathway and dopamine pathway they are, are uh, they they are seated very closely okay now in the dopamine the functions are these reward pleasure motor function that is fine tuning compulsion and perseveration compulsion is what compulsion is the uh, repeated activity which a person do in response to the repeated thinking which is there right obsession is the repeated thinking and compulsion is the repeated doing if you will remember this orders in the motor activity okay so the compulsion perseveration is what perseveration is when there is a repetition of the previous words or pre previous answer irrespective to the change in the uh, stimuli okay now that is perseveration if you are if you have forgotten please recall those classes that we had on biopsychopathology and please recall these terms again now the main functions with serotonin i told you it has got to do a lot with mood okay later on when we will study f30 maybe in the next uh, in the subsequent classes after we have seen the f20 you will understand we will be discussing on the serotonin pathway so main function is mood memory processing sleep and cognition but in schizophrenia these two disturbances or abnormalities does produce the uh, clinical features or the symptoms in schizophrenia now so basically let's try to understand the schizophrenia and the four dopa dopamine pathways so in a uh, mesolimbic if there is increase in the dopaminergic activity in the mesolimbic pathway it brings positive symptoms okay now in the mesocortical pathway if the there is hypoactivity hyperactivity in the mesolimbic produces positive symptoms what are the positive symptoms positive symptoms are delusion hallucination losing of association right so those if there is activation that means over activation or hyperactivation of dopamine in this pathway now, from where does the negative symptoms and cognitive and affective symptoms stems? Remember, in from the mesocortical pathway. So, that means for a person to have low, negative is, that means everything is less than what is expected, right? In uh, positive, that means what a person uh, should normally have, they have more of that. Remember, we had discussed this in the uh, in the clinical discussion. So, uh, if there is hypoactivity, that means underactivity or less activity in the mesocortical. Therefore, it produces the negative and cognitive and affective symptoms. Now, the nigrostridal nigrostridal is a seed of EPS extra pyramidal symptoms now in extra pyramidal later on when we will study atypical drugs the antipsychotics you will understand more about this EPS and tardive dis uh, and uh, tardive dyskinesia okay which are the drug side effects of antipsychotics later on when we will study antipsychotic we have to give the patient antipsychotic Okay, because if we don't give, we will not be able to balance the uh, dupa, the disturbs the uh, active the disturb activity of the dopamine in these pathways. Okay, so the nigrostridal pathway. Remember, nigrostridal has got to do with the. Uh, with motor uh, functioning and if there is uh, decrease or uh, dead in it it produces Parkinson's okay so those Parkinson's types also now will come from here 
Okay, please mark and please recall this and please note these points so that later on we will we will do side effects. Then you will say from where the, this, the, the, does the person have this? Definitely there has to be some action, right? So EPS and tardive dyskinesia mostly has got to do with motor control and motor um uh, active the seed of motor control okay so when there is EPS and tardive dyskinesia that means this is stems from the disturbances in the nigrostriatal pathway now in the tubro in uh, infundibular which is uh, have um, a relation with uh, prolactin so again drugs produce hyperprolactinemia Okay, hyperprolactinemia, which is again, which is a side effects of the antipsychotics. Why? Because these drugs act on this. So you cannot be so sure that when we give, it will act on here and it will not affect this side and it will not affect that side. Because these, if you will see, this whole pathway is very closely related and closely intricated inside the uh, the pathway in the brain okay now let's continue so what is the hypothesis with schizophrenia so as i have told you okay positive symptoms stems from hyperactivation of both mesolimbic and nigrostriatal pathway okay hyperactivate activation of the mesolimbic and the nigrostriatal pathway, this is thought to produce positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Right now, the negative symptoms and the cognition symptoms, these, okay, it is uh, hypothetically they explain that there is hypo hypo or less activation in the mesocortical pathway. Okay, so. Positive symptoms has got to stems from the mesolimbic, okay, and the disturbances in the nigrostriatal, and the negative and cognitive symptoms stems from the mesocortical. Please mark this because they often ask, and this is a favorite question of um, your viva questions, okay. So, uh, yes, it is a dopaminergic pathway. So, if it is more of the activation in the mesolimbic and nigrostriatal positive remember mesolimbic nigrostriatal positive uh, mesocortical uh, goes, goes to the uh, negative and cognitive symptoms now, now so, so again, again just, just for, for you to uh, understand to remember, remember okay so, so if, if there is overactivity positive, positive uh, of the mesolimbic, mesolimbic positive symptoms. symptoms. If, if there, there is, is less activation, activation uh, or hypoactivation hypo in the mesocortical pathway, pathway, okay, see, mesocortical pathway construction is negative and cognitive symptoms. symptoms. Now, so, so what, what do, do we do? do? So, so basically, basically, to treat the positive, positive symptoms, symptoms we, we will, will have to slow down the dopaminergic uh, neurotransmission. You, you all know the dopamine plus you all know accident, dendrites, naps, all those transmissions. So, so we slow down. down. Then if, if we slow down, down or we inhibit inhibition, inhibition right? right? You, you must, must have learned learn in, um, uh, in, in uh, pharmacological class. Okay. And, and we you also, also have learned, learned when, when you have studied an endocrine system, uh, activation, inhibition. So, so we, we need to, to inhibit or we need to stop or we need to slow down, down the dopamine uh, neurotransmission. So, so in, in the mesolimbic, so to, to control, control the positive symptoms. But, but when, when a person, person has more of negative, negative symptoms, symptoms what, what, how do we treat? So, so definitely when it is less, less so we increase the dopaminergic uh, activation in, uh, in, uh, in the dopamine neurotransmission. Right. right. So, so how, how do we do, do this? this? By, By drugs. Okay. Which, which we will be learning uh, in the other uh, in these subsequent classes. classes. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so, so to control, control 
the mass of the deposit system from the mass limit. We slow down the pathway activation and to increase the um, or to solve the negative symptoms, we increase the activation of the to the heart. Are you clear with this? Because there is hypoactivation, so we increase. Definitely, that, that will cater to, to the uh, negative symptoms. Because there is hyper or excess activation in, in the mesolimbic. Right. That's, That's why, why it produces positive symptoms. So, what, what should we do? Uh, we will slow down the dopamine neurotransmitters. So, so, now, what, what is, is the significance then of these pathways? Okay, so, so the, 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 the main significance of these pathways, pathway, let's say, the nigrospiral pathway, the significance is with the movement. So, so associated with this is, is that of the EPS, extra parameters, symptoms, where there is akinesia, akathesia, ziskinesia, okay, tardive ziskinesia, okay, all those. It, it, uh, since, since it's, it's got to do with movement, so uh, it is associated with the nigrospiral. Now, now, the significance of the mesocortical pathway, remember, mesocortical is significant for motivation, for pleasure, for socialization. So, definitely, if there is, okay, definitely, if there is less. Um, less, less uh, sorry, sorry, this, 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 uh, this, 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 would, this, this, it should, should be low to uh, less activation here, it causes negative. negative. That's, That's why, why you, you will see they, they have a P, they, they have, have anhedonia, right? They, they have, um, is, is social, they, they have allusion, right? So, so also, a, APT, anhedonia is uh, a social illusion because there is uh, the activation or there is less activation of the um, of the uh, dopamine uh, neurotransmitter in the mesocortical Now, in the mesolimbic pathway, the, 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 the significance of speech grabs the reality. You understand? So, so whenever they lose reality, that means they have psychotic symptoms. You understand, students? Because they have less contact with reality, that means uh, they are not, they have derealization. Clear yeah, when, when you uh, uh, when you uh, recall uh, uh, the mm, difference between psychosis and uh, neurosis, so uh, they have uh, the, so the associated disease. All these are the positive symptoms. Okay. Now, now the uh, tuberculin-induced pathway, prolactin hormone. This is got to be the prolactin hormone deficiency. Okay, so, so these, these are the significant, the major significant. So, uh, uh, nigrospiral is, is, is related to close relation with EPS. Mesocortical, very closely related negative symptoms. Mesolimbic pathway is related or is the seed of the positive symptoms. And the tuberculin-induced pathway stems the prolactin hormone deficiency. Now, now so, so far. Have you understand? Students, these are the classes which is very important. Uh, the pathway, if you do not understand the pathway, you will not be able to understand why for some patients they have only uh, negative symptoms, and for some they have positive symptoms, and for some uh, they initially they have with positive, then later on they go into negative. Right. Now, why for some patients uh, EPS develops as a side effect of the antipsychotic drugs, and why for some patients they have uh, Disturbances in the uh, prolactin level. level. Are, Are you clear so far? Till now, have, have you understood, understood the dopamine pathway? pathway? If, if you do not understand this, this you, will you will never be able, able to understand from, from where positive symptoms, from where negative symptoms come, and from where those changes in the motor uh, behavior, and feelings, and emotions come. Yes, yes or no? Can, can I proceed, or is there anything that you didn't understand? understand? 
Uh, so far from what is schizophrenia, uh, what are the etiological factors, and I'm do I'm I'm dwelling a little bit extensively. Yeah, I promise you when we do the clinical discussion that we will discuss the pathway. Because if you do not understand this pathway, it will be very difficult to relate with the symptoms that the patient shows. So till now, have you understood? So, so we, will, we will continue. continue. Now, now we, we are done, done with, with the bio, bio with the uh, biochemical uh, features or factors. Now, now we, we will see the physical, physical conditions. conditions. Now, now physical, physical uh, conditions is epilepsy, Huntington's hunting, disease, disease, birth trauma, head injury, injury in adulthood, uh, alcohol, alcohol abuse. And cerebral tumor. Right. Now, now if, if you, you will recall, recall when you take the uh, physical, um, the psychiatric history, you will always ask one portion, portion in the past medical history. And, and usually, and, and also when you take the, um, uh, the the personal history, we, we do ask whether they, they have. Uh, normal birth or is it assisted birth right now because of these right the possible conditions that contribute or that act as the uh, predisposing factors of causative factors and with the presence of other uh, favorable factors it it, uh, it will uh, produce Okay, now, now, now let's, let's just uh, listen again. again the physical condition, epilepsy, Huntington's disease, birth trauma, head injury in adulthood, alcohol abuse, cerebral tumor. Now, now what are these psychological influences? We are done with the biological influence. Remember, in the biological sphere, we have studied that genetically, genetically, if it is hereditary, if uh, first degree parents tend, uh, tend if only one person, if only one parent has schizophrenia, then we have 10 to 14 percent, and if both parents up to 46 percent. Right. And then we have also seen a dog they have checked whether the person does influence if the person is adopted. Right. Again, the biological influence do influence means if the biological parents have. Uh, have uh, schizophrenia, definitely it predisposes a person to also get uh, schizophrenia. Right. And then we have seen the twin studies. Monozygotic twins have four times higher than the dizygotic twins. Right. Now, in the, uh, then we have seen in detail the biochemical uh, influences. The biochemical influence we have the main, the main one, one, which is the dopaminergic pathway, and then, then we, we have other, other pathways, which is serotonin, norepinephrine, acetylcholine, and the GABA. These produce, and any disturbances in this produce the various uh, clinical features which we see in, in the patient with schizophrenia. Okay, and again, schizophrenia is, is again subtype, which, which uh, is the um, F20.0 to uh, uh, um, open my and all that. Right. Now, and, and so we have seen the dopaminergic pathway, the whole dopaminergic pathway. We have the mesocortical. I think we will see from here. Yeah. We, we have, have discussed, discussed about this before. Uh, right. The yeah. mesocortical where the uh, negative symptom stems, the mesolimbic pathway, where positive symptom stems from here. Right. So, so remember, for mesolimbic, there is more activation. Mesocortical, there is less activation or uh, less function in the department. And then we have seen another pathway, which is the nidospiral, because it is a seed of more to control, you will understand from the HMC, EPS, extragram, okay. And the tubule in my blood, this is the seed of the hypothalamus uh, uh, that it, it, it has those uh, uh, revelation with the hypothalamus pituitary, and the main one, the black 
pathogen mm -hmm. regulation. This, this produce, if, if you block, block this, okay, if you block later on when we control the, the, the symptoms of schizophrenia, patient do develop uh, uh, changes in the uh, prophylactic level. Okay. okay, so, so this. Now, now we, we have done all these biochemical. So, we, we have seen, seen the physical conditions, conditions. Uh, and so, so now, now we will see the psychological influence. influence. As, As I've told you, you the, the main psychological influence is stress. Right. Now, now another, another one is the dysfunctional family. family. Another, another one, poor parent-child relationship. Okay. Then, so, so these are the psychological influence. influence. Uh, 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 this, this explains why uh, overcrowding, um, those low social economic uh, classes, and uh, those who have a poor bonding uh, or a poor parent-child relationship, they do influence these features of schizophrenia. Now, how do we how do we know all this? For, For this, this reason, reason, when, when you, you take, take a psychiatric, psychiatric history, in, in that, that personal history, you do stress uh, to, to find out. Now, now what, what are these called? These are these stresses. stresses. Right. Now, now stresses, stresses are the one that, that initiate or excite or bring, bring about the anxiety, anxiety in the person. person. Okay. Yeah. Now, when, when it produces anxiety, so, so definitely, it will disturb the neurotransmitters, right? So, uh, so these directly and indirectly it influence the clinical features of a schizophrenia. Now, now, what are the environmental influences? We done with biological realm, we done with psychological realm. Now we see the environmental influence. One, One again. Low, low socioeconomic classes experience symptoms associated with schizophrenia. Two, poverty, okay. congested housing accommodation, inadequate nutrition, absence of prenatal care. Right. So, so all this, so, so please keep this in mind because when, when you will plan a psychoeducation, or when, when you do the psychosocial uh, need of a person, or when you run the psychosocial assessment, when you go, when, when you take the uh, family history, the personal history, we do take, take into consideration these points, okay? Because these are uh, a, a influence or is associated with schizophrenia. Uh, and based on this also, we can, can plan the, uh, in, in our nursing, nursing care, the, the uh, how, how to uh, 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 on psychoeducation. Okay? Now. now. So, so stressful life, life events. events. Then slightly, slightly higher rates, rates of schizophrenia is found among migrants. Okay? So, this is the um, uh, social, social cultural uh, influences or condition that influences because of fear. Now, now. So, so let's, let's just review quickly the clinical features. You all know about these. It, it, it will just, just be like a, 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 we will review it quickly. One, One. Definitely, definitely from the definition, the definition itself, we've seen that they will have sort of speech disorders. Now, what, what will they have? Here, they, they have autistic thinking. thinking. Right. We, we all know, know. We, will, uh, we will just go through these briefly. We, we have discussed in, uh, in, in detail about each and each every, every features, which, which we have seen in, in the patient. Then, then patients have, have losing of association. Losing of association is when uh, a, a person loses track, track of what he was saying. saying. That means that the person starts, starts speaking incomprehensible and irrelevant. And uh, in, uh, in irrelevant speech. And, and a person, person will have thought block. block. This, this stems, stems mostly from the uh, progression, progression level of thought. Of thought. Remember, Remember those three, three level, level uh, formation, formation level, level, progression level, level and the content. Right. Right. So, so the thought, thought blocking, there is a sudden interruption, interruption of the stream of speech before the thought, thought is completed. After a pause, the, the, the subject, subject could not, not recall what, what he meant to say. say. Now, then, then there may be neologism. neologism. This, this is very uh, common. Uh, 
uh, when speaking to female, female. Ne uh, neologism, uh, neologism is a new form of words or phrases whose uh, derivatives cannot be understood. Okay? Then a person may have neologism. Okay? That means no speech production. Person may have poverty of speech, poverty of ideas. Okay? Person may have echolalia, repetition of words or phrases, remember? Uh, a person will have perseveration also and verb iteration. Right. Verb right. iteration is when a person keeps having stereotypes of speech. They keep saying the same words again and again and again and again. And again. Whereas in perseveration, the person uh, will, uh, the, the, the previous speech, Continues the perspective of the in the presence of a new stimuli. Okay, the delusion. Then, then we have uh, delusion. We have false belief. Right, and the various delusion we have already discussed. Now, in the disorders of perception, is hallucination and illusion. Now, now, in hallucination, we, if you will recall, it, it is the uh, perception, perception of a stimulus in the absence of a stimulus. In, in the illusion, it is um, the false perception or uh, wrong interpretation of a, stimulus, of a present stimulus. The, the difference between hallucination and illusion, one in hallucination, there is no stimulus, but the person perceived it. Different, different types, we, we have visual hallucination, we have auditory, auditory hallucination, we have tactile hallucination, olfactory hallucination, um, the gustatory hallucination. Right. Now, illusion, illusion is when a stimulus is there, but a person perceived it wrongly or misinterpreted. Now, so, uh, the delusions. From where, where are those voices, voices coming, coming from? from? I saw elephants on my bed. bed. Okay, all this. Uh, uh, then there, there will be the orders of effects. Remember, effects, the, effects, the, the seed of motion. Right. Again, the seed of motion stems from the mesocortical and the mesolimbic pathway. Okay. So, what, what happens here? It includes apathy, emotional blunting, and hedonia when a person will have any pleasure in doing anything. Right. Like, like you see, remember the BJ, uh, and, and then inappropriate emotional response, response like, like a rapport. Now, fourth one, one person will have, have disorders of motor, motor behavior. behavior. The motor, uh, uh, there, there will be a the decrease in psychomotor activity or increase in psychomotor activity, and catatonic features are very common. Remember what are the catatonic features? They will have stereotype movement, they will have waxy flexibility. Please recall those classes that we, those terms and conditions that we have to discuss. Yeah. Now, the, the negative, negative symptoms. symptoms. So, so negative, negative symptoms, symptoms affective flattening or blunting, evolution, apathy, and hedonia, and illusion. We have discussed these terms in the in the discussion. Now, the other features which are there is decreased functioning in work, social relations, and self care. Multiple somatic symptoms. Inside is absent. Poor judgment. Societal ideation is there. Impulsive behavior and anhedonia. Now, now, after we have seen this, you will be able to relate why person have these features after we have discussed the Please try to relate these features with the four department pathway. Yes, yes, students. students. Please read each and every feature of this. We have discussed, and we have uh, what it what it is. We have discussed in the uh, in the clinics, clinics. right? Uh, so uh, please, please review it again, again and please try, try to read to the department pathway. Now, now uh, we, we have, have also seen that Coach Schneider also give the, the first right symptoms. symptoms. So, so what, what are, are the first right symptoms? Hallucination. Which, which are all the thoughts, that is, all the hallucination. Voices arguing or, or discussing or both. Remember those uh, in, uh, in uh, hallucination, first person, second person, third person? 
if you will uh, if you will recall so when, when they, they have voices arguing or discussing or about okay then, then voices commenting on what action means basically, basically they write a sentence in, 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 in hallucination, hallucination if, if they, they have auditory hallucination and they, they can hear, hear the thoughts they hear the voices arguing or discussing or both and the voices commenting on what's action. That, that thought alienation phenomena, that means the thought control. They will have thought control, thought insertion, thought broadcasting, just as we have discussed. And in passivity phenomena, they have made feelings or effects. We have discussed in brief about this. We made made devices. Devices. That, that means under, under the, the behest or under the control of the uh, voices heard or under, under the, the control of somebody controlling the thoughts, they act based in response to that control. That, that is, is why it is called made feelings or effects and made devices. devices. Okay. Yeah. Then, then made, made volition or act, act whatever, whatever they're, they're doing. Yeah. This explains why uh, schizomorphs of, of the schizophrenic and schizophrenic patient do have a lot of societal ideation and they even commit to society. Okay. Yeah. Now, now, so, so the, the subject feels that they are imposed by, by some external force. If they are imposed by some external force, that means that, that external force make them, them to feel in that way, or uh, whatever, whatever they do, they drive, drive their impulses is a made one. one. Okay. Okay. Remember, Remember these made feelings, made impulses, and made for the position. And, and they, they do have somatic passivity. Uh, to somatic remembers has, has got to do with it, bodily sensation. So, so again, uh, let's, let's uh, try, try to understand. understand. So, so we, we have Eugene Lula for A's, and, and we, we have, have the positive and negative symptoms. And, symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. and then, then Gord Schneider gives the first right symptoms. symptoms. Right. Basically, he says in hallucination, if they have all those thoughts, and if they hear uh, voices uh, speaking to them, them or someone commenting on them. On them. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. see. And, and then they, they have, have a lot, lot of thought, thought control, control thought, which is uh, thought control, thought insertion, thought, 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 thought casting. And, and they, they have the main feelings. That means all actions or whatever they feel, whatever they do, whatever they act is being imposed by the external force. Okay. Now, now uh, and, and then, then they have somatic uh, passivity. Which are bodily sensations. So, so, what, what are, are the types, types of schizophrenia? schizophrenia? We, we have paranoid schizophrenia, schizophrenia. We, we have disorganized schizophrenia, we have catatonic schizophrenia, we have undifferentiated schizophrenia, we have post schizophrenic depression, vegetable schizophrenia, simple schizophrenia, and other schizophrenia. So, before we do one by one with this, let, Let us review what we have uh, 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 understood today, today about uh, schizophrenia. Okay. Yeah. Now, so, so schizophrenia, schizophrenia basically is okay. Basically, it, it is a term, term which is given by Eugene Lula. Lula. Right. right. So, so here, here uh, Eugene uh, uh, Lula Coy and who is the other, other person. person? Um, Coach Schneider. So, Eugene Lula gives the OAs and Coach Schneider gives the right symptoms. Now, now let's, let's see the clinical features again. again. Uh, so, clinical features. Okay, in clinical features, we have sorts of speech disorders, and we have autistic thinking, loose meaning association, we have thought block, and then the person has neologism. Uh, Musism, obvious speech, poverty of ideation, and epilalia. Then, then we have about duration, evolution, delusion, and that, that is the thought. Okay? Okay? But when, when it comes, comes to perception, a person will have hallucination and uh, illusion. Then, then person will have disorders of effect and disorders of motor behavior. Remember the, the meaning, the, the concept of schizophrenia is there will be disturbances in thought, in perception, in feelings. And, and in their, their behavior. behavior. 
So, definitely, so when you remember this, when you study the uh, signs and the features also go in the sign. What are the disorders in thought? So, what are these? Okay, all these. In the content, content level, level or autistic thinking, thinking progression, and content. content. Right. So, so in the end, disturbances in, in, in uh, perception. We, we have fascination and illusion. Then, then because, because they have disturbances in, in affect and emotions, emotions so what, what are they? They, they are empathy, uh, blunting, and anhedonia, uh, inappropriate emotional response, response and, and like that. Now, now, how, how do then you should not leave the motor behavior out? out. So, so either, either they have, have in decreased psychomotor activity or increased psychomotor activity or in case of catatonic schizophrenia, they will have catatonic features too. Okay, yeah. uh, those uh, catatonic tuber remember uh, we have discussed. Okay, yeah. those. Now, now so, so basically, those are the positive symptoms. symptoms. Now, now, the, the negative, negative symptoms, symptoms are what? Negative symptoms are evolution, apathy, and illusion. illusion. Now, now uh, there, there will be disturbances in, in functioning because of those it brings, brings about a change in the social and, oc and occupational. Right. So, so based, so because they have a lot of psychotic symptoms, they will not have any side among the students when you were MSC. Inside will be, will be absent, their the judgment will be, will be very poor, they, they will have a lot of societal ideation, and then uh, impulsive behavior, behavior and anhedonia. So, so when, when you run, run the mental, mental status examination, if you see these signs, right? And, and please, uh, if you think in terms of schizophrenia, please do, do analyze these areas nicely and uh, run, run the, the mental status, status um, examination. Taking into consideration this. Okay. So, so if, if a person, person has this, then you can think maybe a person, person has F20. Okay. Now, now. So, so, and, and then, then uh, what should I give? Right. First, 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 he, he, he gave hallucination. Another hallucination he stressed on auditory. Okay. First, first second, third uh, person, right? Or the thoughts, thoughts the voice arguing, or discussing a word and voices, commenting. That means voices, voices, uh, voices telling or talking to, to the person. person. Okay. Now, now then, then a person, person will have thought control. Thought alienation, they call this. Right. And, and on the list, list they have thought control, thought discussion, thought broadcasting. To see, see okay. A is hallucination, B thought alienation phenomena, and C passivity phenomena. In, in passivity phenomena, all those made feelings, feelings come, come. Made, made feelings, made impulse, made, made volition. Please remember this when, when you write the clinical features, features why the word the voice of you to the positive, the positive symptoms, the negative symptoms. Okay. And, and then why the body first find symptoms, symptoms given by Kurt Schneider. Schneider. So, so Kurt Schneider, Schneider gave hallucination, hallucination thought alienation, uh, thought control, okay. and passivity phenomena. phenomena. So, so please do write about this. this. These are, are the main features. features. Now, now anything, anything which is uh, when, when they have this, this and when, when we study, study the different types, types of uh, schizophrenia, they, they will have specific features that will uh, suit or that is a specific criteria of these types. This, this we will be discussing uh, tomorrow. I will, I will stop here because the, the class needs to be ready, ready for the next uh, teacher. So I, I hope you uh, you have understood better, better about uh, schizophrenia. And I am going a little slow with these and all the main main points, points I stress. And I have given give, give give you how to uh, how to study and how, how you will understand, understand so, so that you will not have to buy hard and, and you, you can apply when, when you run the uh, MC and when you take history of the patients. So, so um, thank, thank you, students. Thank, thank um, go, go have, have a lunch, lunch and, and uh, uh, we will meet again. Next, Next class. class. Thank, Thank you. you.